We are rolling. I think we're all prepped for a show. Ready? I'm ready. Your hair looks awesome. Well, thank you. Oh. I do all the hair color in the house, okay? It does. Cheers. Pinky. Mm. Mm. Whiny. Tastes like the holidays. It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes festive. Sure does taste like the holidays. Holidays are almost finished as well. We survived. As we are approaching New Year's Eve. Yes. And one thing I have to say is we had the Christmas Eve party. We did. We had the family. At our house. Yes. Both sides of the family. We did. All right. right. And it was, nice. it was good. I like that. And I have to say that the holiday Tupperware controversy uh-huh. is all just about caught up. Just about. I the, think we've got everything back in place. Just right. About. Be, well, the thing is, now, with in the old days, my family, we didn't have Tupperware. My, my, you had paper plates and foil. My parents, my relatives, there was no such thing as Tupperware. You either had the old butter tubs, which when we were children, we didn't even have the butter tubs. Butter came in wax paper. Right. In and you're little, not going to save that for leftovers. In a little carton. <laughs> but my parents, my relatives would get a, one of those cheap paper plates, uh huh, almost like this. Yes, literally paper. Here, put the cake on there. You're going to take some cake paper. home. And then they'd put the toothpicks in. Or if it was meatloaf, they put the toothpicks in and then the foil, and then the foil would po- poke. The, the, the toothpick toothpicks would, would pop poke. through the foil. <laughs> and made, if it was cake, all the frosting would end up Right, the foil. so you ended up with, with a bunch of rubbish. And as it turns out, we get so much Tupperware, it's hard to keep track. They have yeah. GPS Tupperware now. Did they you do. see this? They do. And It's embedded in the lids. Then we open up the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> we open up the fridge the next day. And it's just Tupperware upon Tupperware. It looked like it looked like Gremlins, where you pour water and they they, you know, ten more show up. Like that's what happened with our Tupperware. I know, but then we have everyone else's Tupperware. And we we have your father's. To give it back. And then as we're looking, you know, you, leftovers are wonderful, but after, after three days, yeah, after three days, you know, I love the ham and I love uh, the sausage, but we have to like cleanse our palate. You're like, can we order a pizza? Yeah, we have to cleanse the palate with a pizza. <laughs> But the thing about the Tupperware, now see, the great thing about what my relatives is once you finish the beat, you just crumple it up, throw it out. You don't know how long I spent slaving over the sink, washing, washing all the Tupperware out. And you know, to tup- return it. To return and to scarf a few. There's a few I'm keeping, so <laughs> I'm sorry. Because, they, yeah, you can have the rest. They, they bring 16 pounds of ham. You can have the rest. There's two slices. The Tupperware tub's this big. There's two slices in the bottom. It's like, why don't you take the Tupperware home? I'll throw these two slices of ham in, in a piece of foil. See, so, so then I get stuck washing it. Merry Christmas. <laughs> These are the Christmas gripes. Is this the Christmas gripe episode? No, this is going to be a New Year's thing. We're going to. We're gonna, I have New Year's Eve parties. Oh, we're going to, we're oh, going to talk excellent. about New Year's Eve parties. Fabulous. And we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions, of which I have none. Which I have some. Oh. But one thing I want to say: I bought new toothpaste. We usually buy the same toothpaste. It's a dollar a tube. Mm-hmm. Now the price, for some reason, went to one twenty nine. Aqua Fresh, which I got really accustomed to. Mm-hmm. We bought it over at the Jewels. Yes. And then I, I spotted some other toothpaste. I, I can't remember the brand. I believe it was Colgate. All right, it's Colgate, seventy five cents a tube. So I scarfed what? up a couple, and I was uh, looking at the box, and it said, uh, "Same great." Flavor. As what? Same great taste. As what? It's toothpaste, right? Doesn't mostly toothpaste taste the same? It's mint. It's mint, peppermint. Same, but same, same great taste great as taste. what? I wouldn't say it's great. But as what? What are you comparing it to? What do you same great taste? See, same great taste to me would be like maybe beef tenderloin flavor. <laughs> that would be good. Uh, on toothpaste, though? Maybe that blend of a Big Mac. And you french know, fries? Yeah, the Big Mac and french fries. Make that a flavored toothpaste. Ew, 
Oh, well, what? They have candy with bourbon. Why don't they make bourbon flavored? Yeah, toothpaste? but you're not brushing your teeth with that. Well, it doesn't matter if it's if it's peppermint or bourbon smell. Well, it's because whatever that's the flavor that's going to be left in your mouth and your. How breath. long does that flavor last? You, yeah. you, you finish brushing, you drop a cup of coffee. Some people smoke a cigarette, and there it goes. It's, there's no peppermint. This is true. There's Can no we just have tobacco flavored toothpaste. Flavor. Why not? <laughs> Same great taste. Awful. Uh, this portion of the program right here. Oh, by yes. the way, by the way, you're in the front room. I forgot to mention. <laughs> in case you didn't know. You're in the front room with Milo Kubik right here. I'm Rick Kubik, and that's my lovely wife, Kat Milo, my own person, the Oko. Oko. And this portion of the program is brought to you by Electric Shave. And yes, yes, electric shave, oh, wait, green you, tea complex. You, you have to fold, fold out the, the label a little bit so they can uh, see that it well, actually Well, this is vintage. Starts, this is vintage. It actually does start with an L. Lect- it's not electric it's Williams, shave. No. It's electric. Williams electric shave. <laughs> and this is, is that how the, how the ad with went? soothing green so, no, tea. Soothing? So, what I say? Soothing. Soothing. Who is soothing? <laughs> I have to drink a little more. <laughs> Oh, I love this glass. He sees you when you're drinking. I have my jingle juice. Electric shave. Thank you so much for sponsoring it right here in the front room. <laughs> so yeah, Christmas Eve, too, just on a quick note, we did track the CTA Bus Route 30. Yes. We did track that. Usually people track Santa. Yeah. Not the case in our not not in our case. No. Now we track the uh, CTA bus route thirty in Chicago. And it was For a- those of you from the southeast side, southeast side, side rules, it was or a- the Hegwish area. Hegwish. It, it was on time too. It was on time. Was on totally time. on time. Yes. Well, the weather. It was, it's it, we haven't had any winter. It was sixty degrees. It's freaking too hot. I want to go ice skating. I want I want to take you ice skating. I'm not like going. Our, it's a tradition here at the Marlow Kubrick what? residence. We have never gone ice skating. We go ice skating and then I take her skiing gone. up in Wisconsin. Okay, I've been skiing more than you have, I think. I've also gotten hurt more. No, than I've, I've skied a lot in my day. <laughs> I haven't skied in 30 years, but <laughs> I'm pretty good at it. Didn't you say your knees were bothering you? I think this would help. Oh, it. my this would God. Be like an, this would be like an exercise of sorts. Join us on the next episode of The Front Room when Rick is in traction. <laughs> so New Year's Eve is coming, and my wife and I, we used to do somewhat a lot on new year's eve we used to go to friends houses we'd have friends would have a party we've had a couple of parties we've had a few parties it's been a quite a few years since we've done it mostly we hang around the neighborhood these days because you, we like to have a few cocktails and it's hard to drive and drink and then you get nervous with all the crazies on the road and other people drinking and driving some of the parties that we attended so well, you know 20 30 mile drive you don't want to be driving after midnight you know spending the night i'm not uh, i don't know i like to sleep but we like to sleep in our own bed and we have to worry about the dog and, and make love passionately and sure. hey <laughs> plus we have dogs yeah but new year's eve parties <laughs> I know everyone gets excited about New Year's Eve, and you know I, I tried. We, we we've been to a few parties where you pay to go to the party. It's one of these parties. Yeah, they're gonna have a DJ, some finger food, and then a drink. And one drink, here's, here's, and then some crappy champagne in that here's plastic. Here's what happens. Yeah, you pay two hundred and fifty dollars a person. You get one glass of champagne, at, which is like cold at duck. Midnight. Yeah. And you get about Manischewitz. about two crackers with a shrimp on it. And that's it. And that's it for two hundred. Oh, and one of those poppers, you know, one of those things. Which, by the way, somebody brought those to our house on New Year's Eve once. And if that ever happens again, that person's gonna have to come back and clean it up. Oh, you're talking about your cousin Pam? <laughs> threw under the bus. Seriously, Speaking of, cleaning that up was a mess. Threw threw her under the CTA Route 30 bus. Yes, especially that one. <laughs> Yeah, but New Year's Eve, I, I know everyone gets excited, and I think some of the places, the worst places to go on New Year's Eve, well, one is anywhere where there's a lot of fireworks or children. Especially if there are fireworks and children. I don't understand what the fireworks, I mean, uh, fi- all right, well, if you're three or four years old, the fireworks I get, the first time you saw it, it's like, ah, that's a firework, you know, that kind of thing. How'd that go? <laughs> you know, once you're an adult, fireworks are pretty much the same everywhere. They pre- pretty much have good ones everywhere. You know, the, some of the some of the neighborhoods around here have decent fireworks. Downtown Chicago, a little bit more spectacular. New Here's York City, thing. blah blah blah. New Year's Eve, it's going to be cold. You're going to stand outside. You're going to watch fireworks, and then dogs and kids are upset. And another thing, 
I think I did this once. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, oh, I know. What as you're as a young man, I moved to New York City in 1980. So when you first moved and you somewhere, you were there on New Year's you Eve. You want to see everything. You, know, I gotta do this. I gotta go see the Statue of Liberty. I gotta go see the big rock at the Waste end of the time. The, yeah, right. And kind of like what tourists do. Yes. And you can't blame the tourists because they want to see it. I'm kind of over the tourist thing. I go somewhere. Where's the bar? Yeah. That's where's the bar and where's the pool? And Times I'm, Square. Yeah. And who really cares? When I first moved there, I go, I'm going to go to Times Square because it's a big deal. And they drop a ball. And I go, what, what ball? Why, why do they drop a ball? Because you had never watched it on TV prior see, to that. No, I could see dropping an apple, big apple, right? Oh, they're going to drop an apple. That makes sense. They're just going to drop a ball. So I go, what kind of ball? It's just the beach ball? I mean, I didn't know what it was. So it's a, a ball of lights on a stick yeah. that's on some top of some a top of the building, top of a building overlooking Times Square. So I go, okay, I'm going to check it out. I was by myself flying solo. I'm all excited. I'm going to go Times Square, yeah, party, you know. I didn't realize how many, how many freaking people there are. I was about... A half a mile, maybe about a mile, almost a mile away from where Times Square, where the ball is, and I was at a dead stop. And you said, "This is this crap. is walking I'm going home." And I said, "Forget <laughs> about it." I said, "Hey, I was right off Eighth Avenue." I said, "There's a bar." <laughs> Spent the whole night there. It was wonderful. It was kind of like a Blarney Stone place. Yeah. It was really good. I had a great time. Didn't have to stand. Now, locally, we are going to have the pierogi drop in Whiting. In Whiting. Which we're not, we, we we're not going to have it. There will be the pierogi drop in Whiting. We haven't been. And, and I, I guess it attracts some people. I know Tony Panic, the guy from WJLB, is going to be doing it. The guy. And I WJLB. said, how many people come? I did a show with him just the other day. Mm-hmm. And I said, how many people show up? Like two, three 300,000? You know, so I don't know how many people show, but pierogi drop. Pierogi they drop a, a pierogi into a big pot. And a lot of towns have different drops. We had the salami drop last year. We did. They, if, in in Miami, Brentwood, yeah. Miami, they have a, an orange drop. They have a peach drop in the, Atlanta or something because Georgia is the peach one? state. There was one last year. The turd drop. No, there, it was like a Hershey Kiss drop or something. P- in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, Hershey, yeah. Pennsylvania. So that, that's fine and dandy, but I wouldn't suggest going to any crowded place. And especially... Anywhere where it's very cold, really. That listen. See, that's when like I'm today, not. I'm not in the stand. I don't care if it's fifty. I don't want to stand. No. If but, it's thirty-two degrees out, ten degrees, and just to watch something fall in a pot or a stick come down a stick, <laughs> I'll watch it on TV. A, a ball come down a stick. I was gonna say if a stick comes down a stick, that's really boring. <laughs> Oh, when we were teenagers or and young adults, we'd have parties. There was there was no we didn't even consider food. This is a funny thing though. When you're young, you don't really consider the food. You just want to drink. But you and I were at a, a party of a colleague of mine y- years back in Wrigleyville, and we walked in, and there was a bunch of booze. And you looked at me and you said, "There's no food here." Well, we were older by then. Uh, that's what I'm saying. When you get older, you need food. Well, yeah, you gotta, you gotta. But this person was my divided age, up a little and bit, and he and his roommates there was no food. Right, <laughs> that was really. Sad. They're still continuing on with that. They're still trend. In like a frat house, yeah. I remember years back. I mean, we would just get high and hang out and party all night and stay up till the next day. That's why you're so skinny. That was yeah, not not anymore. These <laughs> days, uh, these days it's lucky if we stay up till eight thirty. Oh, my Lord, New Year's Eve. I can't believe it. You can't believe it. It's almost New Year's Eve. It is. A couple days away. This is our New Year's Eve show right here in the front room. My lovely wife, Kat Milo. Me. My own person, Aoko. Aoko. And yours truly, Rick Kubik. It's Marlo Kubik in the front room. We have to prepare now because we'll go to bed early. <laughs> and we'll miss New Year's. Right. <laughs> I kind of flounder around because you hear like gunshots and stuff going off. I don't know. Dogs will get upset. Why do people shoot off guns on New Year's Eve in the fireworks? I know everyone goes crazy about the fireworks. I don't understand any of it. I I don't don't. either. I don't either. I just switch over, um, you know, writing 2019 to 2020 in my checks. I practice that right around midnight. So I make sure. No, I'm I'm used to that because time (laughs) flies so quickly. It just goes by so quickly. It's unbelievable. New Year's resolutions. Have you made a New Year's resolution and stuck to it ever? Last year I did. What'd you do? Last year was to lose weight. And you did? And I did. I lost 20 pounds. Excellent. See that? See that? She. I've never made a New Year's resolution and I've never stuck with any. Actually, there was one other one that I made that I stuck to almost the entire year. My mom asked me to stop correcting my sister's grammar mistakes. <laughs> 
She said that? She asked me, and I said, fine, I will make that my New Year's resolution. And it lasted until about a week before New Year's Eve. And my sister said something that was just so grammatically wrong. I had to, I had to correct her and just you, break that promise. You have to do that. That's just common sense. Yeah. New Year's resolutions... I have a list. I have a list of this year's New Year's resolutions. Yes, right here, a list, yes. Ah. So um, I made a whole list, and then a few people have sent me some stuff. Okay. Did you make a list? I made no or, list. No, no list. Mine is to continue to lose weight. There well, you, go. you can comment. You can I will comment. comment. A lot of people say, oh, I'm going to stop drinking. You know, that never works. No, I'm going to continue drinking. I'm going to continue drinking even more. I'm also going to be snarkier and correct more grammar. Very good. So, New Year's <laughs> resolutions right here for this year. Yes. Not to get lost even when using GPS. Well, I don't use GPS, so not getting lost. Okay, I usually just continue to make left-hand turns till I get where I need to be. I really don't have GPS. I mean, I have the phone thing, but I'm pretty good with directions, so yeah. I don't have to worry about that. Here's another one, resolution that was sent in. Never bunt in softball. Ah, I don't play softball, but I agree with that. You know, I'd like to play softball. Does anyone have a softball league out there? I think I'm pretty good at softball. Again, your knees are bad. Well, this might help. Oh, and maybe okay. moving, I don't know, sliding, you know. Oh, my Lord. Backhanding balls. I better and... check my insurance. Here's a good resolution. Never fight with someone in anything octagon-shaped. Oh, yes. Only a hexagon. That's the kickboxing and all. Yeah, you know, oh, the you, I MMA. Thought you, I thought you MMA. Did. MMA, what is that? Mixed martial arts. Oh, I thought it was some sort of mammogram or something. No. Oh, okay. That would be, <laughs> I don't know. That would be a full contact MMA, mammogram. I don't watch kickboxing. Here's another one that I agree with. Okay. Not to park near an active volcano. That's a great one. I Well, even a dormant one, I would say, because look at that dormant one just went off in New Zealand, didn't it? Right. So just don't Isn't park there near one in Hawaii that's spurting? I, I think I think any volcano is a dangerous volcano and just stay the hell away. Uh, I can't even read what I wrote. <laughs> his New Year's resolution is to learn to read his own writing. Oh, here's a great resolution. This is one that I tend to stick with, and I think everyone else should. Don't mess with stuff that works. Ah, uh, yes. You do that all the time. It's key. When it's working, leave it alone. Don't right. try to make it better. It's already good. Ah, here's another 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 resolution. Do not put Van Usen dress shirts in the wash. <laughs> you learned that the hard way, didn't you? I think the millennials will not it now understand fits, it what now Van Usen is. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> but Van Usen is the old yes. old school brand. It will shrink. Here's a good one for the parents. Don't tell your children you love them when you really can't stand them. Yeah, just be honest. Be honest. Just be honest. You're a pain in the butt. Listen, you punk, I hate you. <laughs> Go take out the garbage. <laughs> Happy New Year. P.S. You're adopted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, I have one here. A resolution for the over 50 crowd. Okay, that's okay. not me yet. Over, you're getting close. Shut you it. got two years, right? Three. Two and a half. All right, here we go. Two and a half, yeah. Uh, for the crowd over 50, do not do jello shots or shots in general. Yes. Now, you could have a bourbon on the rocks and sip it, or a bourbon straight up and sip, but shots are a different thing. And, and it's really not attractive seeing 50 year old women trying to loosen the jello shot with their tongue in a bar. Oh, I find that kind of sexy. Uh, here's kind of a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, reprise to that okay. to that over 51 okay if you're doing the jello shots or any shots in general don't do karaoke afterwards how about just don't do karaoke period uh, here's one that Kat and I definitely will agree on I'm sorry you want to say that again we will definitely agree you called me Kat did I say that oh here's <laughs> here's one that Kat oh I had that stupid dream remember? I know Oh, that's the ex-wife. Just if you, if you don't know, <laughs> my ex-wife's name was Cat. It hers, still is. Hers is Cat. <laughs> it still is. Okay, so hi, Kathy. Something that you and I agree on. Yes. Don't ask us to go canoeing. <laughs> that's a resolution. I'll stick and by. And Shailene knows this. I've gone twice. Did and you, it will you never went canoeing? Happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the first time was fine because the river was really high. The next year it was bone dry. The next time walked. they're gone. The next time there's like a puddle and they're like. We <gasps> walked the canoe for six <sighs> yeah. miles. What are all these rocks? 
it's kind never of bumpy. again. Plus, we forgot the tent and had to go buy one. Plus, so. the sunburn. Come on. <laughs> so, here's a resolution you should all stick with: do not sleep or pass out on any hotel carpeting. Oh, bad news. I would also say you need to watch when you fall asleep on public transportation too. Right, it's a little safer than carpeting, though. Well, yeah, but you got people that might do stuff to you. Oh, there's other people usually watching, so Uh. at least they'll watch. (laughs) I do miss public transportation in New York or any big city. It's just, it's wonderful. Such a show. Mrs. Quasi could chime in on that with her stories from the CTA. People go to New York and go, I want to go and see a Broadway show. I go, listen, you ride the double L with me. Well, it's the L train now. Out to Canarsie, you'll see a show. (laughs) And it only cost well now it's you, two. You'll now see it's two, something you'll ride home about. Now it's two fifty a, a pop. I think <laughs> of the rides are cheaper than Broadway show. Okay, here's another resolution that some of you should take into consideration. Do not single space your holiday letters. Do not single space them. Yes, Why not? Yes. It's, everything should be double spaced. Oh, uh, how about just don't send us those huge ass stories? Yeah, right. They make for good kindling when I start the fire. <sighs> Okay, here's another resolution, (laughs) and all of you should take this. We're not going to get any cards next year now. Stop picking boogers and putting them on the underside of anything. (laughs) Anything, desks, restaurant tables, the bed. Do you ever like go like this on a table? No, no, I don't. Because you don't know what's under there. Here's one for the over sixty. Still, I'm in over sixty crowd. Don't stand for a prolonged period of time. <laughs> Just don't do it. Because you won't be able to. You're hey, you want to go see this band? Only if there are seats. There are no seats. <laughs> <laughs> and there's three opening bands. And you got to wait in line an hour before the place opens to get in. Because it's general admission. <clears throat> don't look at me. <laughs> okay, that one was my fault. Adamant. Here's the resolution I'm sticking with. Do not put a spinet piano in the basement ever again. (laughs) He made that resolution because he did it once. I was a young man when I did it and an old man when I was trying to take it out. Remember the guys that came to move that? Yeah. (laughs) I ended up moving it. (laughs) Pretty much by himself. I'm going to say this for everyone. This is your resolution. Don't fill your mouth with food and then have a grand idea you need to share immediately. Oh, my God. Chew and swallow first. Spit take. Uh. Uh, here's a resolution I ask of you. Hey, me? No, of oh. all the listeners. Uh, I ask of you. Don't ask me to help you move. No. I'm done with that. that We've done that enough done. times. Not happening again. Here's a resolution we all should stick with. Do not pull lint from your pockets and put it in your mouth. Do not pull what? Lint from your pockets and put it in your mouth. Who does that? I've seen people. They've a lot of people doing that. Ugh. It's a trend. Ugh. It's catching on. No. This is a good one. You're going to agree with this. Okay. And I wish a lot of people would keep this as their resolution. Okay. okay. Do not dance if you're Caucasian. Unless you've had training. Unless you're in the ultimate white dance party, which we haven't done yet. That's the next, that's another show. Yeah, the, the rhythm issue is, um, that's, that's right up there with my grammar issues. Here's a resolution I'm going to send out to all of you. Please don't make me listen to anything by Fall Out Boy. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's that guy I don't know in that band I don't like? <laughs> Why? That's Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy. Another one for the over, <laughs> over 60 crowd. Please, don't drive a Corvette. Oh! Here's a resolution I wish on everybody. Please do not bring an acoustic guitar to a party. He as a go, matter, as a matter of fact... Will go Jim Belushi on you. As a matter of fact, don't bring an acoustic guitar anywhere. Here's one you're going to agree with. Okay. Please wear flip-flops only, only at, at the, the beach. beach. And the other thing that I have to... That's going to be a caveat to that... And I saw someone at the restaurant where we had breakfast this morning walk in, and it was raining out. Socks and those shower shoes. Oh, that's not okay. a good look. That's good when you get out of the shower. If, oh, uh, you're Maybe putting, take you're the putting go- shoes on over socks. If your feet are cold and you're wearing socks, put on some actual shoes. Right. I really Real want, shoes. I want restaurants to say that you can't come in like that anymore. I wouldn't allow it. Because it's gross. It's like someone's coming in and just are stopping. I wouldn't even allow tank tops with the armpit hair hanging out. <laughs> All right, here, a friend of mine told me his resolution one year. He goes, um, 
I'm not going to procrastinate this year. And I, I said to him, I said, well, that's the first thing you did in the new year because you just told me that. No. What? That's not funny. That it's, doesn't work. It doesn't work. What do you mean? They're laughing. Look at, listen. I'm not going to procrastinate. Well, you did because you just told me that. Yeah. I don't get it. How because he's procrastinate? telling me he's not going to procrastinate this year. Right. So he told you his. But he's not going to do it. So he already procrastinated right off the bat. That's a good joke. I don't think so. All right, we'll let it roll and see what the oh listeners think. Here's, here's one that I like. Start eating more pie. Now, you could live by that. <laughs> you could live by that. Here's my resolution to the whole world. Okay. This is the final resolution. Here is right go. here. Ready? Right here. Everyone, look at the crowd. They're just loving it. The cast and crew are loving it, too. Right. So here's my resolution to the world. Okay. To the world. To stop being offended and stop taking things so seriously. I love it. I love it. I think everyone should live by that. And you've been in the front room. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, buddy. From Marlo Kubik. We'll see you, see next, you next year. year. Right.